Okay, so show, and as always, I'm Derek Young, solo show, our first one of the week. It's a bye week for your Kansas State Wildcats as they enter um, the op- their only open week of the year at three and two. And I'm here to kind of talk, you know, like we do early in the week about the big picture, the implications and everything that is going on. I really don't think we see the Big 12 title picture coming into clear just yet. The, the Texas-Oklahoma game this weekend will probably – um, give us an indication at least which one of those teams is going to be truly competitive for the Big 12 championship race. Obviously, I think even if they were to go down, I think Oklahoma is probably going to be there at the end of the day, even though it is probably a league this year where there's much more teams that, that can knock them off. Obviously, Kansas State is one of those, and, and they've already fallen short. West Virginia came close as well. I imagine Texas will do so. Um, and then Iowa State, maybe TCU later as well, um, and Baylor, of course. So it's not going to be an easy slate for Oklahoma, but I still expect them to be there, um, you know, headed into the final week. For Texas, this is probably more of a must-win for them just because I think they're a little bit more vulnerable to the other teams. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, even if Oklahoma lost against Texas that they went and ran the table in the Big 12. But if Texas loses to Oklahoma, there's still a part of me that would be largely surprised if they were to win, um, to run the table. So I I just, I think Texas probably has less margin for error. They really need this more, but the winner of that is obviously going to be sitting pretty, having beat one of the more, probably the most talented team on their schedule. So in terms of the Big 12 race, you know, that game's going to be pretty important. You know, a lot of teams on bye weeks this week. Kansas State, not the only one. Iowa State as well. Obviously, that's who the Wildcats will play in, in a little over a week, week and a half at this point. Um, Oklahoma State in a bye week as well before they get Texas. So they're probably in a good spot if you're the Cowboys. You're already 5-0, and undefeated in the Big 12. You get the week off. Texas is playing Oklahoma. You're probably hoping to get a battered Longhorns team in a week. So, um Really good for the uh, Mike Gundy and company of how their schedule worked out in that regard. For Kansas State, the bye week, just like everyone else that will enter the bye week at some point this season, it's a time to get healthier. It's a time to rest up. It's a time to recover. It's a time to heal those injuries. And they got a few. Hopefully, uh, Daniel Matterbebe will be ready to go against Iowa State. Uh, most of, A big part of me thinks that he will. He's obviously only played two snaps the last two weeks. By the time the Iowa State game arrives, it'll be two snaps in four weeks, so he'll clearly have had enough rest at that point. Reggie Stubblefield, it's not just the cast that he's wearing. He's dealing with other ailments per Chris Kleiman, so it'll be good to have him probably get most of this week off, maybe a part of next week too, just so that he's able to be closer to 100% when the Cyclones come to Manhattan uh, that those aren't the only injuries. This is a bruised and battered team at this point. Uh, Skylar Thompson, obviously probably not hundred percent, but this will be a chance for him to get closer and closer. The same for Will Howard, um, the backup quarterback, which it didn't happen um, in the last game against Oklahoma, but I do expect uh, Will Howard to be back on the field at some point this season, even if it's just to spell Skylar Thompson here and there and and also give Kansas State a semblance of the quarterback run game that they probably do not have when Thompson is in the game. Uh, Christian Duffy is came out of the game with a ding here and there. Josh Rivas as well. Ben Adler last week. So I think probably a good week for the offensive line to kind of get off their feet a little bit too. Um, and then Shabastin Taylor, if you if you listen to Chris Kleiman at his weekly press conference, it sounds like he's getting closer and closer, except it's probably not as much of a recovery phase for him. It's probably more of a ramp up phase. And this uh, bye week allows him to do so a- as well. So just not not the most healthy team. I think TJ Smith was far from 100 percent against Oklahoma, too. He's an important part in the back end of that defense and clearly a defense that needs some fixing. Then that's our next point. Um, but also, I should touch on Boo Massey, defensive member of K-State. That's the position that's really been bruised and battered as well. We already know that Khalid Duke is out for the season. Boo Massey out two to four weeks per Chris Klein, an outside shot that he could be ready for Iowa State. Felix Anadike, a little banged up. I, I doubt he practices much this week, if at all. 
Brendan Mott is another one that they thought maybe was going to impact the field at some point this season, probably still can. He had been unavailable up until this point. This is the first week that he has practiced. So the defensive end position, get a guy back, but lose another one or two, at least for this week. And we'll see what happens next week. Uh, I expect Felix on obviously to see the field against Iowa state boom, Massey, probably a little bit more questionable. Um, speaking of that defense, um, this bye week is going to allow them time to probably a little reassess themselves, evaluate themselves, a little self scout, just to see where things have gone wrong the last two games. It was a brilliant defense for the first three weeks. What happened the last two weeks in Big 12 play against both Oklahoma State and Oklahoma? Spencer Sanders looked like a rock, rock star when he played against the Wildcats, and the Sooners didn't have to punt. And if we go back to the last season, obviously different circumstances and probably some unfair situations for K-State just because of the amounts of players that were out. The, the transfer portal hit them. It was a double whammy situation. It wasn't great. But if you go back, it's a seven-game Big 12 losing streak for Kansas State at this point. And a lot of that, the culprit is the defense. I mean, it's not only, you know, making Spencer Sanders look amazing. It's not only not allowing Oklahoma to punt. You go back to the end of last season, it's the 45, 45 to nothing loss to Iowa State. It's surrendering 69 points to Texas. So for some reason, against Big 12 foes, this defense is just not hitting an all cylinder. So far from it, really. Um, they, they, they'd like to hit on a couple cylinders, not even all of them at this point. Then for me and Chris Kleiman kind of shared the same sentiment during his press conference, just you know, improving the tackling would go a long way. And obviously that's talk, we're talking about running through leverage. We're talking about, you know, not just like getting a guy to the ground and one thinks, Oh, you're just not getting a guy. If you're not getting a guy to the ground, it's usually a lot more that goes into that, how well you are leveraging the play, um, how well you are, missing if, if if you're going to run a guy you got to run him to the right direction where the rest of your team is you got to know where you are on the field know where your teammates are going to be on the field and, and really rally into the ball hard to rally the ball when you're not getting off blocks that's another problem get off blocks they were doing that the first three games why did Kansas State look so much faster in those first three non-conference games they were getting off blocks and that's an important thing um as a defense to do because then it allows you to have more hats on the ball even if you're going to miss a tackle here and there you usually got a buddy or two maybe three or four to help clean it up for you and right now the last two weeks that just hasn't happened um hopefully that can be remedied in the bye week it's uh that's something that you can turn on and off pretty fast but it's also pretty futile so kansas state has to improve in that department in my opinion that'll help the defense out um and tremendously I mean, there were guys running open the first three weeks too but the tackling saved them tackling goes a long way in college football and football in general and the defense it's hard to play defense right now i guess unless you're georgia and iowa but tackling goes a long way it's also an opportunity to find other players that may be able to contribute for the wildcats later in the season or starting in a few weeks or starting this week um not necessarily starting but beginning this week some guys that haven't contributed yet they can focus on them this is really the only time you can really develop during the season and see if there's anyone really close or has gotten closer to really being able to see the field and contribute to, and you know earn some playing time um, just allows it to be deeper because injuries are going to continue to mount up. Those don't lessen. Those usually increase unless you have the, the, the best injury luck in the history of football. And obviously that hasn't happened so far for Kansas State. So find other players. I mean, Chris Kleiman reeled off like, you know, a, a handful that he'll be, that he, that he has his eyes on this week. Obviously one is safety, Marvin Martin, who's already seen a few defensive snaps this year. Andrew Lyngang, offensive lineman, true freshman, um, they really, really like him a lot. He's going, they, they speak about him the same way that they once spoke about Cooper BB when he was up and coming. So I think that's a pretty good sign of things to come. DJ Giddens is a running back that they really, really like and have since he arrived. He was a late signing from Junction City. Um, so he's someone that has really flashed um, at times in the off season that they want to give a look at. And obviously the running back room, pretty healthy right now, but that's, that tends to be a position that can get banged up. Chris Kleiman mentioned quarterback Jake Rubley. I don't think he's going to play this year, but I think it's somebody that I think is starting to see some improvement, it sounds like, in practice for them to at least maybe want to, you know, glance at, you know, observe a little bit more on an in-depth note um, this week. Uh, he didn't mention him, but R.J. Garcia is a wide receiver that they that – you know, they think has a lot of upside and that they're high on, um, maybe not for this year, but in the future. 
Jalen Travis is someone that they continue, like Chris Kleiman, even without being provoked, not directly asked about him. Sometimes not even asking about a young player that's really turning on. He keeps mentioning Jalen Travis. I think that was a guy that was really trending in the right direction throughout most of the offseason. It was probably going to impact the football field this year for the Wildcats, but he got banged up and he missed almost all of fall camp. And I think that really set him back. So he's someone I think where the light's starting to turn on for him where I think he might see the field sooner rather than later. Damian Alalio needs a tackle from Manhattan High. True freshman, it's good to hear his name from Chris Kleiman as someone that's probably worth evaluating and keeping an eye on because they're going to need you know, some help in the defensive tackle room a year from now. When, um, there's a chance they can lose a lot of players at that position. And just in general this week, and what it means for Kansas State, implications, big picture, this is what this uh, podcast is all about. You're listening to the KSO Show. I'm Derek Young. Uh, it's a good break. It's a mental recovery, right? I mean, you got a really big football game coming up. It was two weeks. Now we're looking at about 10 days away at this point against Iowa State. Both teams really, really need this game. Iowa State coming off a loss um, to to Baylor. And uh, no, I, I may have actually, I think I actually got that wrong. As But it's a really big ball game for both teams, obviously. Kansas State, you can argue that this is a, probably a must win for them just the way it falls on the schedule they are three and two they have lost seven big 12 games in a row as i alluded to earlier this if they lost to iowa state it would be their eighth big 12 loss in a row oh and three to start the big 12 this season just from a psychological standpoint that is hard to get off the map when you're staring that in the face you got to be a tremendously strong football team with the utmost built-in culture and maybe they do but that was kind of the weakness for this program a year ago. So I don't know if it needs to be tested like that at this point when they're probably still massaging that a little bit in that locker room. So this is, I think, a must win for Kansas State. Um, and then, because if you don't, it's just hard. Psychologically, I think that, that takes a toll. It makes the other games tougher than what they really are on the surface. I was right. I don't, I don't know why I second guess myself. It wasn't last week as they beat KU last week pretty handily, but Iowa State does have a big 12 loss as well against Baylor, uh, a two-point loss. And, and could they be thinking ahead? I mean, Kansas State's next game after Iowa State, the road game at Texas Tech. Um, that's probably not one that necessarily is going to grab a kid's attention. If I, if Oklahoma State's sitting there at, you know, you know 6-0 and, and having just beat Texas, 3-0 in the Big 12, I mean, because that's who they play, Oklahoma State, right after Kansas State. Iowa State could could be looking ahead to them. It's it's amazing to think about where Iowa State is. They were top 10 at the beginning of the season, and, and now in, in a lot of polls they are not ranked. And uh, a little bit of a fall from grace, if you will, for the Cyclones. Um, this is a almost a desperation game for them as well um, and probably want to keep up the juju from last season where they beat the Wildcats 45 to nothing. But, again, Good break, mental recovery from the Wildcats. Um, you know, thinking you're really good, three games, and then, you know, get, losing two in a row. I think, uh, you know, it, it's a good physical break, but a mental break too. And probably for his coaches and just kind of recalibrate the season, kind of get everyone rowing in the right direction once again. And, and and I think it's important to have perspective this week too. Realize, you know, this, this guy doesn't have to be falling. You could still believe that you're a good football team. And, and talking to those players after they lost to – Oklahoma on Saturday. I think that's what was instilled in them in the locker room after the game by Chris Kleiman and, and his fellow coaches. Like, hey, we are a good football team, and you need to believe that. And judging by their comments afterwards, I, I, I got the sense that they bought into that. They still believe that they're a good football team. And I think it's it's about having that perspective. Obviously, you want to take the next step forward at some point, and maybe that'll be next year. Who knows, obviously. And it's not not to say that they should be settling for for losing to these teams. I'm not saying that. But how good Kansas State or how much uh, successful this season can be needs to be put in perspective. It doesn't have to mean the sky's falling that they can't win another game. I know some people just believe that and, you know, are, can get really, really negative after losses, fans alike, players alike. I get it. It's human nature. But I think it's, it's important to remember, like, who they have played to and what that means going forward, what they can still accomplish. There's a lot of teams on the schedule that Kansas State can, can beat. There's a lot of teams that can beat them. Don't get me wrong. Probably everyone but Kansas, I would think. Um, but Kansas State can beat everyone on the schedule too. And, and they probably, 
and I didn't think this before the season, but they probably play the two toughest teams in the Big 12 at this point. Obviously, Texas has an argument. Uh, I don't think Iowa State has that argument anymore. So two of the three, at least, best teams, unless you want to argue Baylor as well, two of the four. I mean, Oklahoma State's number 12 in the country right now. Kansas State lost there in their place in Stillwater when the third-string quarterback played over half the game. So, I again, perspective here. As Skylar Thompson plays, are we looking at a more competitive ball game? You bet. That offense looks a lot better. They were incompetent in Stillwater. Um, so perspective, right? You played the number 12 team on the road with your third-string quarterback playing over half the game. Oklahoma, Skylar Thompson's back, but – hey, that's the number six team in the country. That's a team that goes to the playoff nearly every year. Yes, you want to get to a point in your, in your program at some point, probably sooner rather than later. I get it if you're listening to this, that you want to be able to win these team, win these games. But just because you've lost these two doesn't mean that this season is gone. There is a lot to play for, and there's a lot that can still be accomplished. Now, they got to fix that defense first and foremost. I get it. But there's just a whole lot that can be done for Kansas State where I'm just saying the sky is not falling if we can apply a proper and appropriate perspective, you know, these aren't terrible losses and, you know, there's, and for some, there's no such thing as a good loss and I get it, but if you're competing somewhat with the likes of a number six, number 12 team in the country in a game where it's on the road with your third string quarterback, I think that your potential is much higher than the, what it may seem right now is all I'm saying. Um, it's a bye week. They're not going to hear a lot of KSO shows this week. The next time you hear us, hopefully I'll be joined by Grant Flanders or Drew Galloway, and we're probably going to start to talk a little bit about the Iowa State game and what it means and what the big picture of that could be as, as we're not going to be able to speak to many people from the Kansas State side. It's a bye week. They're actually going to take their week off as they should. We did speak to Chris Kleiman on Tuesday, but that was it. Hope you enjoyed this edition of the KSO show. I'm Derek Young. Tell your friends.